So first A and A or so our outer A and C or our inner B and A our last B and C. So now using some of our other rules, what are our other rules? Let's go up here. But let's look at this thing first. We got an A and A or A and C or B and A or B and C. So which rule we're going to use first? Let's go ahead and look at this guy here. Like this guy looks to be the most most interesting. So A and A. Let's go through our our list. A and A. There it is right there. Rule seven. A and A is equal to A. So let's go back. So this guy goes to A according to rule seven because A and A equals A. And, oh, excuse me, or A and C or B and A or B and C. So it looks like our first terms and our second terms of this portion have a common factor, a. So let's factor that out, a, 1 or c, or b and a, or b and c. So what is this guy right here? This is one of our special rules, 1 or c looks surprisingly similar to, where is it? There we go. A or 1 is equal to 1. So we know that 1 or C is equal to 1. And I'm going to continue writing the rest of this here. But what does this look like here? A and 1 is equal to, according to rule, full, rule 4, is equal to A. So A or B and A or B and C. Now we're presented with a very similar situation where we've got a factor here of A. We factor that out. A. 1 or b, using the first term and the second term, and we're going to keep our the rest of it. So, and again, 1 or b, according to our rule 4, oh, where am I, rule 2, a or 1 is equal to 1, now b or 1 is equal to 1, Okay, so again, using this a and one is equal to is equal to a. Basically, shrinking this guy down to this, and there we go. So basically, using well, final result, a or b and c. So basically, using our FOIL method, we came up with this. Then using certain rules, which we've already discussed, we come up with our final answer. Okay, let's go back up and talk about rule 10 and 11, which are no, which are a little bit more, a uh, little, little bit more conceptual than these other ones. But before we do that, let me let me draw this out. So what does this guy look like here first? Because I, I like pictures, so that means A or B. A or C anded together is equivalent to A, B, and C. So A or B and C, where that's an OR gate. And there's an even prettier representation of that. Basically, all this is, is stating you have two OR gates, or one of the terms is common between the two OR gates, and they're both being ANDed. What you get is you can just AND the two different terms and then OR the final one. Uh, and basically, OR the result of that 
with the common term. Okay, let's go back up and talk about 10 and 11. Okay, so A or A and B. We kind of uh, discussed this in one little section of uh, 12. Basically, we've got a common term of A that can be, oh, what am I doing here? One second, guys. That should be a an or symbol right there. Is there's a common term of A in there. And one or B is one. A and one is equal to A according to our rule four up here. Right there. Rule four, A and one is equal to A. So let's go back down to, to 10 here. Basically, this is our result. Anytime there's a, you basically you just factor it, factor it out. A or A and B is equal to A. Okay, guys, last rule is number 11. I think this is one of the more esoteric rules uh, where you've got basically an A or not A and B is equal to A or B. Basically, you need to follow a chain of reasoning that needs to be a little pre-science using some of our previously discussed rules. So, start off with A or, not A, and B. So, let's use rule number 10, which we just discussed right here. A or A and B is equal to A. So, that means we can add, because we've got an A term here, this guy to it because that's right there, okay? So now we're using rule seven. Basically, we, we need to, uh, here, one second here. Using rule seven, if remember right, A is equal to A times, A, A and A. So this guy can be replaced with A and A Okay, no, no jump of, uh, no uh, leap of the imagination there. And now remember, A, or, excuse me, A and not A is equal to zero, according to rule eight. I don't know why my screen is having some issues. I think it's because this thing is too long. Okay. And now we could factor all these things out. Because, you know, that's the kind of our FOIL rule, which we just discussed in 12 down here. It's basically the reverse FOIL. But this guy right here, a or not A is equal to 1, and anything 1 and is equal to what's coming in there. So what we get is A or B. Graphically, it looks like this. Basically, this whole mess here can be replaced with this. Okay, so using some of these uh, 12 rules which we discussed here, it's going to make your life a lot simpler as we go into simplifying Boolean expression. Uh, next, we're going to talk about De Morgan's theorem.